so this morning we're going to serve some Murena Kodash and I'm going to be using my GPS uh, to do that. Uh, so I'm going to make a little video of me using my GPS. Some of the changes I've made since my first video on my 250 pound RTK GPS. So the version I'm using at the minute, I've changed the 10 inch screen in the 250 pound version to a 15.6 inch screen. So it's a much bigger screen, but more importantly, it's a much brighter screen. So one of the problems I had with the older version was that the screen just wasn't very bright. So whenever it was a sunny day, it was really hard to see. So this screen is uh, much better. It's also 1080p, so much higher resolution. Um, but it is more expensive. It's uh, £180, um, so it adds a fair bit to the cost. And the GPS is also a lovely price. Um, I used to get them for £36, they're now 55 or something. Um, the antennas have went up about 10 or £15. The Raspberry Pi, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 now, instead of a Raspberry Pi 2. So it's up the price by about £20. Uh, I need the extra for assessing power to run the GPS uh, and to run it at a higher resolution, bigger screen. So that's why I... had to change for the Raspberry Pi 4. Hopefully this screen is recording I'm going to make this entire video and you're not going to see any of the GPS. So um, whenever we're driving on the road or we're outside of one of our fields, it GPS zooms out. Uh, and then once we enter the field, it will automatically zoom in and it will also bring up the field number and record all the information uh, needed for that field. So the buttons are all fairly straightforward. I try to make everything so that if someone who had never used this before was sitting in this tractor, they could use it straight away. So down the left hand side, we have the main button which is to start and end your AV recording line. Then the only other button I ever really use is the setup button. Um, down the right hand side we have cloth cover and to turn that on you just touch anywhere else on the screen other than another button. Um, and then there's a little steering wheel, it's for auto steer. Uh, the code for the auto steer is done but the hardware stuff isn't. Uh, I might do that at some point but it's a lot of effort and to be honest there's very little use for it on our farm. Could have just drove into that gate and never barred it the last time. It's very annoying. So I can actually still see the prills of the night I sewed like a week ago. I had no rain at all, so but there's rain coming in two days. step there whenever we started. Uh, that is another uh, ongoing annoyance and I'm not really sure why it happens. I think I know why it happens. Basically I'm using a program called RTK Live to do the actual RTK calculations and if it picks up a bad satellite uh, or a new satellite, so it just acquires one, it just throws that information straight into the algorithm which can cause you to get that jump. Um, but it happens very rarely. And I've tried to change the settings to do different things like uh, remove GLONASS satellites, stuff like that. But then you just end up with problems with um, with getting a fix or uh, getting a signal quick enough. So I just leave it. I just put up with it. We've got our speed in the top right hand corner, which is, uh, see how consistent it is, 
So it's a good sign of how accurate the GPS is if you can uh, measure speed. A little bump there you see, that was because we went down that little hill and I don't correct for uh, orientation. So we'll turn off our AB line. around the headlands first and then we'll follow that line back. Pin the screen. Drop in your phone. Put it and follow the line. So we'll see how close we can get to it. It's a lot easier when you have some tracks in front of you. Then you, the tracks disappear and you're left to just follow the GPS. So 50 centimeters is about as good as I can do. So we have LEDs along the top to try to guide you where it's here, but to be honest I just look at the screen. We can maybe zoom in a little bit. Um, hit the button. Of the field, just as we finish it up, and we cannot see anything on that screen. Hopefully, it's screen recording. So, finished the field, let's just zoom this out again because we're going onto the road. Um, so, now we will upload what we just applied to the database. So, we hit upload. And we are doing fertilizer, and that was field 111. And we applied 0 0.7 tons of 0060, the rate of potash. So we will enter that into the database. And that's it finished. Um, and we'll exit that. And then if we went into our records, we could uh, see the nutrient balance for that field just searched it and we can also get a summary of all of our fields and um, so I'll do that now it takes a while but I'll run it now and then I'll cut to whenever it finishes so it's just calculating the NP and K requirement for each field on the farm based on what we applied so it does take quite a while the time consuming bit is actually fetching all the information over 4G rather than the actual calculations. We have the we have the summary updated and it orders them based on nitrogen. So you can see based on recommendations for that crop how much uh, NP and K they're short. So one of the nice things about this GPS system is that you have a fully fledged computer behind it. So if you want to watch YouTube, if you want to listen to music through it, and you have internet connection, you have a web browser, uh, you could put in spreadsheets on it, you can connect a keyboard and mouse and use it for whatever you want in your tractor. So whilst it is a GPS unit, first and foremost, uh, you can do loads of other things. So I can X on that. That. So uh, yeah, it's it's like a fully fledged Linux desktop computer as well, and it's a touchscreen computer with GPS and RTK for on the points, and it's pretty fast as well. So it's 
thought about it.